Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way! And today, we're going to disassemble the veteran Abrams and check its quality from the outside and from the inside. So, let me tell you more about it. Wrong way. And tell you what, it definitely wasn't easy to pick this thing up and put it on my workbench. It weighs around 45 kilograms. It's one of the heaviest electric unicycles ever made. And yes, this is the sound of broken bearings. Sadly, after just 70 kilometers of riding, the bearings here are broken and I'll need to fix them and change them probably. So this won't be covered in this video, but sometime in the future in an update review. The Abrams in general is quite a simple EUC. In order to remove the side covers, you need to get the pedals out and here, wow, screws with Loctite, amazing. These hold the pedals in place. And then you need to hammer out the pedal rod, which in this case was just a bit weird in the color. Like I can show you a different pedal rod from the big old wheels. It just looks a bit more shiny. Not really sure what's the difference here. There are no spacers and voila, this is the pedal itself. It's huge, much bigger than on the veteran Sherman and quite similar to the Extreme Bull Commander. It has also more spikes than the Commander. I still prefer grip tape or Nilonova pedals, but I guess this does the job. I don't know, somehow. It's still a bit slippery when wet. That's what she said. In the middle, there is a small plastic piece, which you can remove by unscrewing three screws, which have metal threads. And there you can see the mechanism for the pedal closing and staying in place. Pretty nifty, no magnet. To remove the side cover, and the batteries are actually attached to it, you need to further unscrew five screws, which are all hex screws. I like that a lot, it's harder to damage them. And they also have Loctite to keep them in place. Really nice. Some more, some less, anyways. Next up, I needed to remove the side panel, and I gotta be a bit careful lifting this side panel, because the battery is connected to it, and therefore this XT90 plug could be ripped off, which I don't want to do. I'm not the biggest fan of disconnecting the battery every time you want to look inside a wheel though. The connector though is pretty solid, XT90 on both sides by a mass with a communication wire so the motherboard also receives information from the battery packs from the BMS. Now the only company that lags behind in that is Gotway. Gotway, please step up your game. So I'm not a fan of this XT90 plug just dangling there. I think it should be better secured and also maybe in a casing because this connector is not waterproof. Taking a closer look at the side panel, we see something really weird. First up, there's a lot of empty space, which could be crammed with batteries. This wheel doesn't have a big battery for its size. And there is no side panel from the inside of the wheel well. So the batteries get sprayed with dirt. However, the middle piece where the fuse lies, which is in the box that you can see, and the XT90 connector is pretty clean. So I guess it's water resistant, maybe? But I would really like to see an inner shell here because a lot of stuff just gets stuck there, which is bad. And check out some pictures here that a writer took from his uh, veteran Abrams. Sadly, I don't know who t took the picture. So if you want to reveal yourself, please comment below. I'm starting to get a bit picky with labeling on wheels and the label here on the wheel is in Chinese. It should be in English. There should be more information there. There should be a do not throw away sign. Just check out some other batteries and their labels like from Kingsong and Emotion. Now I don't expect it to get a CE rating because that's kind of hard to do for high voltage wheels. Uh, but you know, scooters get it like mopeds and um, yeah, I just wish those batteries will get certified someday with a UL2272 form, uh, which would make a legal use of these vehicles definitely a lot e easier. So big companies like Emotion maybe try to do that in the future. This is, I guess, a professional garage made battery. And I don't believe that there is a external circuit for the BMS here. It's just kind of similar than like the all got way once, but it's good that there is a fuse. Taking a further look at the inner shell, well, there's a lot of dirt and especially those wires on the bottom, I'm scared of them to, to get wet. Uh, the off-road badging outside of the wheel doesn't really scream off-road from the inside, I guess. This is not really safe to use off-road. I wasn't even going off-road, I just was 
doing 70 kilometers in damp weather and riding on snow. And on this side you can see what prevented the water ingress to further areas. There is a frame and there is uh, also the metal bars that you also see on the Federal Abrams. And on the top we can see a aluminium I know, box for the uh, motherboard and th a thick wire insulated, not like three separate wires, phase wires on the Sherman uh, with silicone going out from the top compartment. Then the plastic fender, which doesn't have like a rubber seal, this is a plastic seal, prevents water, you know, partially getting into the area where the fuse and the box for the motor wires is. And also the XC90 connector. And then we can also see a lot of screws that hold on to the pedal hangers. Now this uh, crossbar sort of did have some scratch marks on them and I believe this might rust in the long run and if you hit it hard it might bend which is I guess also not the best thing but maybe it's overall just a bit of a stronger material. I can't put my finger on my exact thoughts about that. Now we are unscrewing two wood screws, <laughs> wouldn't be a real wheel opening without those, to get access to a small plastic box where the phase wires are connected. Now that's really interesting because you actually don't need access to the motherboard in order to swap a tire here. So in a way this is sort of a quick tire change thing now it looks really gross <laughs> this thing there's lots of silicone but it's well sealed uh, i opened it up with a plastic pick in order not to use anything made out of metal but i guess it's kind of good to have them there because as said you don't need access to the motherboard it's just a bit quicker from there the cable goes into the motor. There are some sharp edges but I'm not sure if that would be a problem for wear and tear in the long run. Now these three huge screws have a pretty untypical size. Those are hex screws but you need a good tool to open them up. I tried the small one, I tried the big one and it didn't even budge. Like it was super difficult to just remove these three screws. So I did what any real man would do and I just started unscrewing the smaller ones. And to my surprise, also lots of Loctite. Really, really cool to use this product to let those screws be inside. And they also have these small washers to keep them from unscrewing. But then I had to try again and open up or unscrew these big screws. So I took a special tool and nothing. I needed to change my strategy and Finally, I could unscrew them. Once I did the initial turn, it was way easier to unscrew them and the veteran Abrams has those huge screws, which also have Loctite, that hold the pedal hangers to the motor. I think that might be a robust solution. Well, we'll have to wait and see. In the end I decided not to remove the motor because I didn't have any bearings and I didn't want to have the spark um, between or the arc between the battery and the motherboard on the XT90 connector. It says it's anti-spark or it might be anti-spark but I still got a spark and this is not good for the battery. There should be definitely some resistors or some sort of circuit that prevents those sparks because this is just unhealthy for the battery. Now I will want to remove the motherboard cover and for that of course I need to remove wood screws that are on the trolley handle grip. Now those screws tend to get bad after a while or at least the um, plastic that holds them in place so I don't really like that so much. And then I need to remove a further 8 screws, so a total of 8 from both sides, to loosen the motherboard cover. All of those screws I believe also had Loctite so wow! But chronologically speaking, before we get to the motherboard, I also needed to remove the other side panel and of course it was also dirty. And by the way, those screws that hold on to the plastic covers for the battery, they shouldn't be accessible. That shouldn't be a Phillips head. That shouldn't be accessible to regular riders. The phase wire box is now just a plastic mold. And briefly we will also remove the bigger hex screws to see the front light module and the tail light module with integrated charge port. There's also a special screw in multi-purpose, I guess, water resistant connector, which connects those modules to the motherboard. And there's also a beeper 
uh, in the front unit. The front housing is also made out of metal, so that's pretty cool. It all in all seems robust. Maybe there could be better waterproofing for those parts on the inside. And you can see that these lights have now a mod from Kulai Market, so they are not blinding. The tail piece also has the same connector and it, the connector also has a small ridge so it's easy to put it back in but the tail piece is also more dirty from the inside the mudguard is too short and uh, I believe there is no silicone around the edges here so this could be also improved. We can charge this thing at 12 amps using those GX16-5 ports and there's also a USB charge port for your phone. And now we can finally lift up the top cover and get access to the motherboard. Now taking this thing apart was kind of easy, it was very straightforward and I like that. It will be definitely good for service stations to repair this machine. Taking a closer look at the motherboard we can see the MOSFETs here. Partially they're under the board, partially they're outside. We can see the connectors from the charge board and the MOSFETs also for the lighting I believe. There's a gasket all around which is really nice so I don't think any water would drop in here at any time. We also cannot see any fan. Uh, I'm not really sure if that thing will run cool because uh, there's also even no radiator which I think is a missed opportunity. And as we can see the trolley handle has a separate compartment just like the extreme bowl which is just really nice the board looks just like the Sherman board I guess but with the difference that here the motor wires the face wires are soldered onto the board and they are not removable there there is no air tunnel underneath this aluminium heatsink and there's are, as said no radiators which I think is actually I said a missed opportunity and the trolley handle just as a last bit of info is attached with plastic which of course could be better for such a heavy wheel so yeah this was the teardown i hope you liked it leave comments what you like about it leave comments what you don't like about the abrams and if you're still here leave a like on the video subscribe to see more content like this i'll see you in the next video see you soon